Hello and welcome to our corner of the internet where we speak about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. Hello and welcome to the Hemingway Jones Fountain Pen Show live. Super excited to be here tonight. Always happy to see you all. And as usual, from looking at the comments, you guys started without me. At some point, I don't even have to be here. I think you guys could just do the show. And it's always lovely to see so many of you here, so many of the same names. Many of you are members of the channel, and for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being a member of the channel. It really helps, and it really helps to support the channel. So if you would like to be a member, you can certainly join. In fact, for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members right now, we're doing a pen pal exchange, which is super fun. I have a couple of letters here I need to um, answer, which I'm really excited about. And I've sent a bunch out today, including John Manuel's letter, who I see in the comments there. Hello, sir. Your letter is on the way. So you'll be all set there. So yes, if you'd like to be part of the letter exchange, Go right by the subscribe button, hit join, and become a Cognoscent or Illuminati member. And if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It really does help a small channel like this one to reach more people. And we are picking up a lot of new faces, a lot of really interesting and exciting people in the comments. This channel has the most amazing comment section I've ever seen. And I'm not just saying that because it's mine. It's so positive and so supportive in there. I'm so impressed with each and every one of you that treat people with such dignity, respect, and acceptance. And even when someone is coming from left field, which I generally celebrate, by the way, I, I really get a kick out of the mad ones. Yeah, I kind of consider myself a little bit off center. So I like the people with different perspectives. I like people with, that are slightly mad. And I see that he, all of you guys do too, which is very encouraging. So it's a very accepting place. Love to have you all. So we have a really good show tonight. We're going to make it very interactive too. Don't want to neglect the comment section. It does get a little tough doing a show, trying to make it interesting. So you guys are watching, you're listening. I want to make it compelling and to keep up with each of you there in the comments that are saying some great stuff. And sometimes I'm watching the fantastic conversations that go on there. So really great to see it. But one of the things I'd like to cover this evening is something that I call New Year's Absolutions. So we're going to cover that. And then the main event is talking about what I consider to be the hardest part of journaling. And I want to go a little deep on that and a little personal. So I think that will be very interesting. It's a theme you guys are going to see quite a bit of on this channel. We're really delving into journaling and self-improvement. I'm going to call it that, but not really from like a self-help perspective, but really sort of an individual struggle perspective, just how we diagnose our own thoughts. So we're going to dive deeply into that. That should be really fun. And then I want to talk a bit about collecting and what it means to collect and how we collect and what my goals with finger quotes are for collecting this year. And it might surprise you. It's probably not what you're thinking. So, so we'll cover that too. And we're going to try to do all this in an hour. <laughs> and um, something I'll cover briefly too, is that at the encouragement of someone in my comments, I decided to take the plunge and to buy another Jin Hao X159. So let's see how the second iteration holds up. So didn't have much luck with the first, did work on it for a while, got the nib to finally open up and smooth out for me. Let's see how the second one does. This one in dark blue, it may take a few weeks to come. 
So let's see what happens. So we got some people with some bad colds out there. Judy, I'm sorry to hear it. I also was battling a cold. You guys may have heard it in my voice the last couple of uh, of these live shows. I had to hit the mute button a few times, and I think one time I didn't make it to the mute button. So I am pleased to report that this is my first live in, I think, the last three lives where I'm back to my full vocal capability to the extent that that means anything. So I truly hope that it's the same for you soon. So the Stig is here, one of my favorite race car drivers, and he says nothing's wrong, or she, uh, nothing wrong with my X159. I'm a glad, I'm hoping to join that club. I was not so lucky with my X159, which was well documented in a video that I did, oh, I guess it's about two months ago, that, that was pretty popular. So I'm pretty happy with that. I see Sextus Pompeius also did well with his X159. Mine was a disaster, guys. <laughs> um, but I did sort of work on it a bit, and it is now writing much better. But I'll be honest, I don't reach for it very often. It was on the desk for a while. I tend, when I get a new pen, to keep them very handy when I work from home especially. So I see, um, oh, Ben Joe is mentioning that he has two X159s, and both are good and were ordered directly from the factory. I did that this time. The, the first time I bought it off of eBay, the second time I bought it, um, I guess, direct. I, I'm not sure direct. I bought it from Alibaba, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Very interesting. So that'll be sort of a follow-up video to come, and um, it should be interesting. So let's start with New Year's Absolutions. And what this is, is just my way of sort of sharing with you guys that I think it's okay to sit a year out. That I think sometimes we get so hyper-focused on goals and trying to obtain things or money or positions or sort of distractions that we sometimes miss the bigger point of life and the bigger point of things. And I think even sometimes perhaps we could achieve more by focusing less on achievement, if that makes any sense. And part of it, I think, is something I'm learning about myself. And that's that every time I take a break, I throw my back out, which sounds like a non sequitur. But it leads me to conclude that I must be holding this stress inside me that once I get a break and I relax, it leaves me vulnerable to that particular injury because it's too much of a pattern. It's nearly every vacation I throw my back out. And that's too coincidental. And rarely do I do it any other time. So uh, I'm coming off of that now. Um, fine. Um, there is different degrees of this, and this one was fairly mild. But it definitely woke me up. And it woke me up to the fact that I'm putting too much stress on myself, I think. And most of it's mental because I'm actually in a really good place work-wise. I have a fantastic position at an amazing sort of boutique bank, if you will. And I feel like we're doing great things. And it, I just really fit in there. And it's going really, really well. But I put on a lot of other stress on myself between the channel and trying to do really high, high uh, quality content for you guys. And I do some other stuff too, as you might imagine, in my life. So I think it's okay not to come up with these ambitious plans each January and hold ourselves to them with sort of a strict um, disciplinary action. Now, I don't mean this to contradict some of what I said otherwise, 
where in your journals you write certain goals, but I think it's in the crafting of the goals that perhaps it's better to work on things like being more present with your family or being more reading more books or, you know, journaling more. If you're going to set a goal for this year, how about journaling? Wouldn't that be just so good for you? I, I know that I get so much out of it and we're going to, we're going to speak quite a bit about journaling this evening. So I just think also with some storm clouds in the economy and things like that, I think it's a good time to sort of hunker down and circle the wagons in your life and hold what's dear to you close to you, your family, your friends, those amazing resonant times that you have in your life that you never forget. I just think that experiences are so much richer and more interesting than things. So I don't know, guys. I guess when it's time to craft your goals, try to think about being calmer, more present, more loving, more open, because I think that's a tough state to be in. So I'm just throwing that out there. So it's a New Year's absolution. To the extent that I can, I'm absolving you of your requirement to be type A all the time, 24-7, 365. Enjoy yourself. Take up wine. You know, learn everything you can about wine and don't spend more than $15 a bottle. That would be a fun activity for 2023. So I personally... I'm definitely going to try to enjoy more time at home. I know this spring I want to dine al fresco more often. We have this nice little area that's almost like a courtyard. It's sort of protected. It's not a courtyard, but it's sort of the space between our three-season porch, our shed, and uh, the neighbor's fence that creates this nice almost courtyard-like feel. I like to put some, string some lights across have some statues back there and cook for my wife and my daughter and just have some really interesting outside experiences back there. So that's sort of the things that I'm going for this year. So let's see. All right. So enough of that. Our next thing that I think I'd like to talk about is what I call, because I think it makes a good segue the hardest part of journaling. And what I think that is, is the level of honesty that's really required from you to put down your thoughts that may or may not portray you in the best light. And I think these are the types of insights that will really lead to a lot of incredible self-discoveries for you. Now, I just finished editing a journal. Excuse me. I just finished editing a video on journaling that's going to be up on January 20th. And I went to visit Walden Pond and I was able to journal at Thoreau's cabin, the reconstruction of Thoreau's cabin, which is really charming. And it's also really affecting to see all the people there and their reverence for Thoreau and the kids that are learning about it and, and the sort of trepidation that they show toward this monument of simplicity and, and sort of crafting a intentional life, if you will. So it was a lot of fun to write that and it took a long time. I think you guys have heard me speak about this for about three weeks. So it took me a while to edit this and to write this. And I'm really proud of it. But as I was, I came up with a bunch of techniques that you guys can use to journal. And how I feel like they can really help you in your everyday life. And the big part of that is this... This 
almost dispassionate way you need to look at yourself. You, you need to be a journalist of your own life where you diagnose and, and I guess, convey certain situations that might not show you in the best light. Let's take some kind of conflict you may have had with someone you love. We all want to be in a position where if you have an issue with your partner, the goal is to work it out. Sometimes you say hurtful things back and forth and it really doesn't do anybody any good and you, and you love each other. So why are you doing that anyway? And you know you're being a jerk, but you do it. But it doesn't help anybody. You don't have to do that, as you probably know. And maybe some of you have never done it. I'm kind of at the point where I do it far less than I ever did. I was a very angry young man. And I feel like I'm wise because I'm sort of like I'm the person. What Churchill described about America, that's me as a person, I think. And Churchill said about America, it can always count on America to do the right thing after it has tried every other possibility something to that effect. Well, that's sort of my life, you know, like I think I turned out really well in the end. And a lot of it has to do with my relationship with my, with my wife, because you can't be a toxic individual. You can't be angry all the time and hold on to somebody who's lovely and amazing and supportive and someone who is trying to enter into conflict with you or disagreement to get to a better harmony and not to hurt you. But if in your life you've only ever had arguments over who could draw the deepest blood or have the most cutting insult, if you've ever thought in your life, I need to win this argument, as soon as you think I need to win this argument, you've lost that argument. There, are, there is no winning an argument with someone you love. It's about restoring harmony. So what you need to do, and I'm, I'm not, you know, what I would consider that you do, is that when you journal, always accept the possibility that you could be wrong. Now, don't always think you're wrong, but say, could I be wrong in this situation? And if so, how? Or at what point is it at least part of your responsibility? The worst people are those that say, you know, I'm the best at person. I never argue. I'm this. You know, that's a problem, you know. But you should be able to work things out constructively. And you both should be much, much stronger for it. And I think that a journal can really help you do that. And there's a couple of things that you have to do to maintain that. One is you need to be incredibly vulnerable and realize that there's a strength in being vulnerable. Like what I'm saying to you now is kind of put me in somewhat of a vulnerable situation, but I can handle it. And I know that it's going to ultimately make me better as a person because I'm reinforcing what I believe by sharing it with you guys. And hopefully you'll see some insight into this. And maybe you'll also get some journaling ideas out of it. Because especially when you're starting out journaling, you, you do look for inspiration and different ways to journal. And I think it's a good idea to even do a conflict journal. To go back and look at the times when you weren't seeing eye to eye with someone and how you handled that. And if you sort of think that the goal of all of this is to make things more harmonious and better for both of you, then it's a much more constructive situation. And if you love somebody so much that you don't want to lose them and you certainly don't want to hurt them, then you're not going to use the same tools as you would if somebody tried to run you off the road and they box your car in and now you're both out face to face, it's an entirely different kind of confrontation. So I just feel like it's a tremendous opportunity to just 
heal yourself, forgive yourself for past anger, and move forward as a really constructive person. Kate, whose letter I just read yesterday, said, write down the issues, write down your feelings and what things could be different. Absolutely. I think it's really good to, to really not just write down what you do, even the most simplest things. If you just write down what you did in a day as a means to start journaling, which is really the place to start. You write down how you feel or how those situations made you feel. It really helps to open you up and get you thinking a bit deeper about how you approach your life. So there's absolutely, it's absolutely a tremendous opportunity. As Gerald Oswald says, journaling is a self analysis of one's self to improve one's life. Exactly. Or it certainly can be. I mean, there's many types of journaling. Some people don't choose not to go that deep, but I'm just asking that you consider it because it certainly is a valuable tool if you do. Even if you ignore all the undercurrents of your life and you simply write down what you do each day, you'll see certain themes and currents emerge that will teach you many things about yourself because you repeat a lot of the same conflicts and a lot of the same situations and sometimes over and over again and it's almost like you're trying to learn something different from it i can tell you guys that i always chose extremely chaotic people to be in my life because i was used to that i was used to an atmosphere where the drama was all always at 11. It was always like passionate and people yelling and people um, really expressing themselves with a lot of um, colorful language. So when I got into a healthy relationship with my wife, at first, it almost felt like boring. It almost felt quiet. And I it took me a bit to adjust and to realize that I was home, that this is how things should be. And something within me calmed after a while. And I think I started to see the world much clearer. And instead of being angry at things that may or may not have happened in my life, I realized that a lot of the things I was angry about only still existed because I was carrying them. That almost no one else remembered and now that i'm a little older most of the people are gone if they're not just completely out of my life some of them have checked out of this planet and um why carry that why am i carrying the tools of my own pain and it was journaling and marriage that changed the channel for me. And this has actually been really helpful uh, lately, just kind of sharing it this with you guys. And I think it's important approaching a journal because I always think that if there's a distinction between a diary and a journal, I would think a diary is more episodic. Uh, and I think they share attributes. Each of them share attributes. But I would think that a diary is a little more episodic and a journal is more, has more of a purpose. Now, now that I said that, I do kind of consider myself a diarist because the focus of my journal is my life. And I also like the term diarist. Actually, that's nice. You know, like if I wasn't Hemingway Jones, I could be the diarist. It's kind of hard to say, though. Anyway, I do like the term and I think there's a, a lot to it. But I feel like journaling does give you this opportunity to self-diagnose. And there's a lot of other reasons to journal, too. You could take up language. You could go traveling somewhere take a deep dive. 
But why not take a deep dive into yourself? Because the one thing that you can control is your mind and your perceptions and the way things get filtered in. Start being the curator for your mind. Don't just let it think anything it wants to think. Start sorting out those voices that are in your head. Are they supportive or are they remnants of critical people or critical thoughts you had when you're young? And if you're still carrying those, why? Why are you still carrying those? Let those go. So curate your mind and feed it well. And I feel like to do that, you really need to push yourself to say the awful stuff and to put it down on paper. Uh, Haramist, exactly. I'm so guarded and self-conscious that I am to date. A complete and spectacular failure at journaling. I think you need to, um, I need, I'm going to try to not be so hard on yourself. Take your time. It takes a long time, I think, to be good at journaling, just like anything else. So I would be a diarist. Uh, Herm, I'm trying to pronounce your name. Haramist? I think I'm going Haramist. Haramist, be a diarist. Write what you do each day. And be slow and gentle with yourself with the why you did it. Start with the what. The what is the easiest. As a matter of fact, if you really want to ease into this without it being too challenging as your personality or personality type, try doing it as a handwriting exercise. So don't even think that you're going to get into self-analysis or even writing your day. But your subject is going to be what you did that day, but the object is to work on your handwriting. Just make it about that for a while and see what happens. As you get more comfortable in putting down what you did, now the subject is you. You've put the focus on you now. And once you feel comfortable with you, start to expand it. I actually wish I thought of this before I did the journal, but this could be the makings of another video one day. But put the focus on yourself slowly, really episodically, but distract yourself by making it about your handwriting or your print writing or however you choose to write. And you'll get more and more comfortable with yourself and then you can start getting into the strata. You can start going deep where all the fossils are and, and the lava. And then you can really understand yourself. But don't be too hard on yourself at first. Oh, Gino, I hope you don't mind me putting this comment up. Journaling got me through my divorce. I can appreciate that, my friend. That's one of the toughest things that can happen to anyone. Loss of a loved one, moving or divorce, which is really another way to lose a loved one. Really tough. So I'm, I'm there with you, buddy. So I get it. So Mummy Brown. Hello, Mummy Brown. Always a pleasure. Journaling has helped me to communicate with others and to recognize how the help myself is needed. See, that's tremendous. That's great that it's working for you. And I think it's a tremendous tool. And each of us can use it, I'm sure, in slightly different ways. But with the ultimate goal to make ourselves better as people, which I think... Oh, this is interesting. I'm sorry. I, I need to put this one up. So uh, Wolf Kate Witch says... Building a relationship with your journal is, is like a relationship with a person. You can start simple. I think that's fantastic observation and very true and goes right along with what I'm saying. Distract yourself. Make it about writing. Before you know it, you're really thinking about why you did something or why you're not doing something. And then you get really deep. Sea line says the handwriting practice is a great advice. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think it's it's a really fantastic way to start. It's actually one of the ways I started because I really wanted to have better handwriting. And I guess I made the focus myself. That was my first fountain pen that I owned. And it was a Waterman that I broke in half, which I'm very embarrassed to say. I didn't know how to write with them in those days. And I really mucked it up. Sextus Pompeius. Handwriting exercise is how I got into the habit of writing every day. 
Yeah, see, there you go. I think it's a really nice way to get into journaling. Now, also, you don't need an expensive pen to journal. You don't need an expensive journal to journal, right, Wolverine? Where's Wolverine 3660? You don't need an expensive journal, right? Um, I write in expensive journals, but at least I'm aware of my contradictions, right? What did Walt Whitman say? Didn't he say, um, I contradict myself? I contradict myself. I contain multitudes. So, multiple personalities perhaps, but I don't think you need, I can show you something like this works brilliantly. So this is a notebook from a company called Odyssey Notebooks. And it has a hard cover, has sort of a moleskin style elastic, and you know, nice little area to write your name. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything, just so you guys know, I'm just bringing this to your attention. But this is the bit that I think you guys will appreciate. So this particular one isn't lined, but I do have ones that are lined. Um, Odyssey Notebooks, if you can make this out. 68 grams per square meter of Tomoe River paper blank. So it's 148 by 202 millimeters. Hardcover, 200 pages. Um, I think these go for around $30, $35. I have a couple. They sent me these a while back. Um, to do TikToks. I'm trying to find another one for you. Now, oh, here's another one. But this one's online, too. But this is the soft cover. But all Tomoe River paper. So you could use something like this. 200 pages might take you half a year to fill up. I guess I'll just put them there. So you don't need super posh journals. Or pens. I think my favorite journaling pen overall is the Twisby Eco in fine. Um, Art Senna says, Dollar Tree composition notebooks are fountain pen ink friendly for anyone on a budget. There you go. Brilliant. I didn't know that, but brilliant. Um, I see Wolverine's there. Here he is. I'm here, Hemingway, just listening to you and reading all the comments. You know, I have to single you out and give you a hard time, my friend. I just want to make sure you know I'm thinking about you. So, yes, uh, Mummy Brown also likes the composition notebooks. Nothing wrong with those. As long as it's a durable thing. I mean, Tomoe River paper in itself is durable. Because you just want it to last. I, I can mention that some of my early journals didn't survive. And the reason is I have some back here. So the, this is what I was journaling in, which is, which is funny. This is actually an Italian, but um, there are some entries in here, or maybe it's the other one. Yeah. So here you go. So back in 2000, I journaled in this. And before this point, I had... A bunch of these going back a few years and they didn't survive they were just kind of too delicate or they just didn't look like they should be kept and they didn't and they weren't it's so funny there's some kind of list here like a packing list um, oh it's like a shopping list for I wonder where I was living then Oh my gosh, there's something here about the Palm 5X. I don't even know what that is. It must have been some kind of gadget I had in those days. So anyway, this was a journal that I used. It it does have a really some cool entries in Rome. And I'm glad I still have that one, but i um, also glad I upgraded. So I'm seeing a lot of different comments about journals ben joe marklin saying i got a 400 page tomoe river journal with ink journal pages in the back for 30 bucks on etsy see there you go 
there you go. All different price points. I'm sure you guys could find something that works for you. Here's my buddy, James Fahey. Hi, HJ. A brief hello. Hello. Well, my lunch break presently, I'll catch a replay this evening and share my thoughts. That would be great, my friend. Always a pleasure to see you on his lunch break, which means he's on the other side of the world, which is always fun when you're doing these live shows. So brilliant stuff. Uh, Benjo Marklin says it's the Palm Pilot 5X. Yeah, how about that? That's a long time ago. So whatever it takes, don't feel like you need to put a lot of money into your journals. Just make sure they last because you really don't start seeing the progression until several months has elapsed. So just a bit of advice. So very good. So I'm going to take a little break and show you a couple of things. I mean, it's not really a break. It's a break from talking about journaling. So here's the um, Ackerman ink, the Den Hag, which I bought for this really cool bottle. So it's hard to drain it once it gets all full, but um, really easy to fill it up here. And then, of course, you can just tip it so it fills the top and it's just a fantastic design and it also sort of looks like a potion bottle so i really like it i'm not super psyched with the actual color unfortunately i do have it here so i can show you in my ink journal that's the color so it's not horrible but maybe a little pink but definitely a gorgeous bottle and i'm hoping i use it up soon because I might use the bottle for something else. But I really like it. I ordered this from someone in Europe. I'm not sure of the company. Because I couldn't find it locally. And then I also wanted to show you this other ink color. That oh, Wolverine is saying. I have six of those Ackerman bottles. They are wonderful. Aren't they awesome? I mean, I bought it for the bottle. So... I've been using this ink almost exclusively lately, and it's sort of, believe it or not, um, taken over for Diamine Oxblood in my repertoire. And it's, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. There's a YouTube channel called like Stilo Corsani or something thereabouts. It's an Italian pen company. And I really like it because he tends to get things that you don't see every day here. And he mentioned this ink and I saw it. I knew I had to have it because it reminds me of Mont Blanc Bordeaux. So this is the Scribo Rosso Chianti. And it's a 90 milliliter bottle. And it's quite large, right, as a thing. I mean, it's heavy. It's thick glass. It sort of looks like a whiskey decanter. And once again, it's going to make an excellent bottle once it's empty. But I am really over the moon with this color. I am using it for everything lately. And I want to show you what it looks like. Now, the swatches look a bit pinker. But look at the writing. This is what it looks like can practice so it's a really fantastic color and i've been using it in my journaling and in my work and everywhere my visconti is full of that right now so i'm really enjoying the ink it's different and it definitely speaks to me right now there's something about writing in wine that I liked. I used to love it with the Mont Blanc Bordeaux and they did away with it. So uh, Gerald Hauswald says, whoa, that's big in your world, taking over for Oxblood. It certainly is, at least for the time being, if not permanently. Manny Lamont says it's a nice bottle, isn't it? I mean, I just like holding it and I wish you could feel how heavy this is, guys. And I got this from... Um, gold spot they were the only ones who had it and i think i'm gonna go and grab another bottle because i really like it i don't remember how much it was i think it was like 30 dollars, but i'm not sure but it, it reminds me do you remember 
on high tension wires, they used to have those glass insulators. That's kind of what this reminds me of, if you've ever held one of those. People used to use them as paperweights and whatnot for a while. So um, pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, so my buddy Wolf Kate Witch says, try Vaness Pen Shop. They have autonomy of unique inks. Uh, probably a ton of unique inks. I will. I'll check it out. Thanks. Oh, I see Gino says it as well. So I will check those out, guys. I appreciate that. Because I tend to sort of find things a la carte where I go looking for them. And then um, then I, I, it takes me to new places sometimes. Um, oh, so Anderson, Anderson Pens in Chicago carries a whole line of Ackerman inks. That's good to know. Thanks, Wolverine. I appreciate it. I, I should just ask you guys. Um, so very good. Oh, here's a, a good bit of discussion. I see Phil Munson. I think you're answering someone's question. And forgive me, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. It's like being split when you're doing the show. But lines, dot grid, and unlined in that order. So we're talking about which journals we prefer. I have a different answer. I kind of despise dot grid. I have some. I can't think in dot grid as a line. And I certainly don't think of it as free form either. It just sort of bothers me on every level. And um, for me, I think I prefer unlined, then lined, and then the dots. Now, why do I prefer unlined first? For years, I didn't. And I always preferred lined. And sometimes when I get a lined journal, I feel almost more relaxed. Like, okay, I don't have to do any work. The lines are there already for me. But the reason that I love unlined is that when you get that line straight across the entire page, going down the entire page, and you nail it, it's so satisfying. I, I can't explain it the way I feel, but it just makes me so fulfilled, so impressed with myself because I'm not necessarily a neat person. But you can see I'm not doing too badly. I have a lot of practice. Like, look at this. This is all unlined. And this is me kind of um, unconsciously writing unlined because... The point here is to test the ink, not be particularly neat. But this is relatively neat, especially this, right? So I think I'm getting better at it lately. So I really get a lot of fun out, out of that. Let's see what Sextus Pompeius says. I find Dot Grid less obtrusive than lined, but unlined is still my favorite yeah that's interesting i just am confused by on by dots i'm sort of befuddled now i could see oh and then there's graphs too ben joe is is saying graphs i couldn't handle graphs in fact i can't even handle this see are you guys familiar with this kind of line this is claire fontaine and it's called French Ruled. Have you seen this? And the point of this is for your handwriting. Now let me show you what a mess I made out of it. This is my practice. And by the way, I go backward, which I don't know why. Because this is obviously the front. And I started in the back. But here we go. It's kind of kind of crazy there's a whole lot of um a whole lot of rosso chianti on here too so french line it's a whole nother dimension but fun i just can't keep it uniform so it's a bit of a problem for me 
Rachel Lucci says, I never thought of writing with an online journal in that way before, but now I might give it a try. You know, it's just really satisfying. And you can also kind of be creative. Not that I necessarily am, but you can turn your journal the other way. So if you're writing in a journal like this one, this is a Bottega Obscura journal, which is online. So you can certainly write like this, but you can also turn it and write like that, which is kind of cool, especially if you alternate it. So you see a lot of normal writing, if you will, and then suddenly you're writing like this. Or say if you're on a trip somewhere and you have a little bit of artistic inspiration and you draw, you know, the Duomo in Florence, and then you write around it. And you have this beautiful page. You could certainly do that with this. So it does give you that kind of flexibility. But if you're, if it drives you nuts when you go off the line, even your self-made line, you might not enjoy a journal like this. But when you nail it, it's very satisfying. So there is that. Yeah, turning it the other way is really cool. I've done quite a bit of that more before. Lately, I haven't, but you can even mix it up. You could even write the traditional way, and then for the rest of the page, you can turn it. Um, I forget what it's called. I'm sure someone in the comments knows. But there was a time in the 19th century when it was very popular to write in two different directions on the same page. And it was a little looser of a handwriting style where there was more room in between the letters so that you could work other letters through going the other way. So I suppose you could do that too. I think it was called cross writing. But I could be wrong. Wendell. Wendell Booth. I have to have lines or it's bad. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. So Mummy Brown turns her writing the other way. It's handy when you like filling every inch of free space. I mix it up. I'm famous for going all the way to the bottom, too. I don't leave a margin at the bottom. If I can put a word in there, I do. So I fill up these journals, and it's, it's not by leaving a lot of negative space. So, so I think there's a lot of options, guys. Definitely. Um, let me see. I saw a comment. So Manny Lamont says his shop is closed till March, unfortunately. Are you talking about um, Bottega Obscura? Uh, if so, he does close his shop quite a bit. He's, he's an artist. So he makes them when he wants to. And when he has other things going on in his life, he does different things. Uh, but, you know, that's why I was saying before to you guys, like, I'm not shilling for him. He just sent me that beautiful journal, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. But sometimes his shop's not even open. So, um, I mean, I'd be more than happy to help promote him. I think he's great. He does fantastic work. They're absolutely beautiful. I'd love to fill up a whole shelf with them. So that's a, a dream of mine. So, very good. Oh, see, Gerald brings up a good point. They have the Japanese writing boards you can put on their sheet to follow the lines. That's a very good point as long as you can see through the paper. But um, I once tried to uh, use my use lines on my iPad so it would shine through the paper. And then I realized that it just reacts to the pen. So it it doesn't that didn't work. But if you had some kind of a light board. If you had something that looked like a lectern and maybe with a transparent top that had lines on it and you put a light underneath, I don't know why you would construct such a thing, but it probably would work. And yeah, I thought about it. So, because it would make your letters look so good, wouldn't it? If they were perfect. And a lot of you guys have seen my letters now. Um, many of my letters are out there among the Cognoscenti and Illuminati members 
where I have to put in a commercial for myself. If you join the channel and you become a Cognoscenti or Illuminati member, we'll do a ledger exchange. It's part of the benefits. It's super fun. And it I'd like to think that it's really more than you might expect because I write an actual letter. It's not like you get a few sentences in a card, like a throwaway. It's a letter to you from me, what I'm thinking and what I'm doing at that time. So um, if you'd like to join the channel, consider being a Cognoscenti or Illuminati member because you too could exchange letters with me. It'd be fun. Simon, how are you? Bottega has great journals. Epica is my backup when Bottega is out of office. That's, um, yeah, I've seen Epica. They look really nice. I actually don't have one. But um, fortunately for me, I have two backup Bottega journals. So it's going to be a bit before I run out. Oh, okay. So Wendell is saying that I have decent handwriting. See that? And Wendell, it was an actual letter, right? You might have been expecting four sentences on a card, but I I put a lot in there. So I hope you appreciate it. You know, it's super fun. Um, Wolf Kate Witch, also one of the few members I've met in person. I've met a couple of you guys. And um, always fun to exchange letters, too. So, yeah, different different kinds of journaling, all kinds of sizes and costs. I think it's frustrating if you start a journal and you realize that it feathers, that it's just terrible. Like moleskins aren't very good. I know there's other makers that do moleskin-like journals that don't feather and bleed. Bleed are, is no fun. So I want to touch a bit in our remaining time, trying to keep it around an hour, but we'll see. First, though, Wendell says, a beautiful letter, and I love the stationery. Thank you. I'm almost out of stationery, guys. I've used it all up. So I just ordered some new sets because um, I used a lot of it in the letter exchange, which is a great reason to use up your stationery. So, my collecting goals this year is to get more into experiences, to spend more time with what I have. And I think the pens that I will add to my collection will be more along the lines of vintage pens that strike my fancy. I've come this close to buying a snorkel pen because I've never had a snorkel pen. And I've always wanted to try that kind of fill mechanism. And there's one out there I quite like. And it's a color I like. I really like, I really like um, burgundy as a color. So I'm super excited about that. But I haven't ordered it yet. But it might happen. So for my collecting goals, it's more things along those lines, right? I don't think I am slightly tempted for an upper end Pelican, an M800 or an M1000 because I've never had an M1000 and I'm really curious. Pelicans to me are, have always been sort of diminutive pens these really charming, small, elegant pens. And I love the idea of the larger, huskier, sort of um, more grand versions, if you will. So that could be something I could end up with before the year is out. But I really want to spend a lot of time with the pens I have. I do feel like Mont Blanc has reasserted itself as the leader in fountain pen innovation right now. And it's something I'm saving. I think we're going to talk about next week when we have more time. But they have definitely awoken and are bringing a lot to the, to the table right now. 
and it's very, very impressive. I could see them luring me with something. I had to have that Egyptomania. There's a couple ones out now that are interesting, but I don't think they work for me. We can talk more about those at another time when we have more time. But um, but it's definitely more about experiences. I don't want just numbers of pens coming in. Um, I don't need any more Lamy Safaris. I have two. It's plenty. I, I don't need personally anymore. So I... I do see, uh, I see a lot of fun comments. This from Wolverine, the Pelican M1000 pen is the offensive lineman of fountain pens. Exactly. And it's, you don't expect Pelicans to be brawlers. And I think that's what's a lot of fun about that pen. And it's what makes me curious. So that could definitely happen. Um, yeah. So I definitely see... Shack MD, that's the curved nib is something we uh, that I feel like I might want to talk about next week. It's 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 an interesting pen. It's an amazing innovation. It's rendered beautifully. It's it just shows that Mont Blanc is back and they're swinging hard. And I feel like they are capturing the mantle of the most important part of fountain pens in a way. When you think about many fountain pens up to the 500 hour mark, you're talking about pens that are some version of a Yovo Schmidt nib delivery system. And that's not meant to be said pejoratively because I love those nibs and many pens express their characteristics in different ways. It's like using a Seiko movement in a watch. You can express it in very, very different ways and have a unique and compelling writing experience. Mont Blanc makes their own nibs and they are making sure that everybody knows that. And I think it is really going to get to the point where a couple years from now, Far fewer people will be saying, well, it's $900 or $1,000 for a Mont Blanc. Why should I spend that much? I think the value proposition is going to be very, very clear because it's an in-house nib. It's tuned to what they are trying to express, whether it's their calligraphy or the curved nib or one of these other nibs that they're coming out with and it's the price of entry and along with that by the way you get calligraphy lessons great product support so i think mont blanc's where it's at right now and um i'm really impressed i think a couple years ago you couldn't say that as strongly they were tired they had the same style of pens and occasionally they put out a special edition and you would buy that because it was different because you thought maybe it would be worth something someday like that Hemingway pen I should have bought but now they are making tools for writers and for artists and they're thinking they're thinking of themselves almost like an atelier that they're crafting these gorgeous nibs for these stupendous pens. And they keep doing that. I think they're really going to rise to the top. It's just very impressive. And I think you can do these things wrong. And I think of Rolex, the watch company came out with a watch that can go to the deepest part of the ocean. No watch has ever gone deeper. It's ridiculous. It's it's like two and a half inches thick. It's like wearing a bath escape on your wrist. It's, it's unusable and silly. Now they're trying to prove a point. They want to have it for marketing. Um, but it's useless. Mont Blanc's doing it a little different. They're creating 
specialized nibs that can do things no other nib can do in a most beautiful way. And you can get that for $1,000. That's a compelling proposition. So that's what we'll talk about, I think, next time. But um, there, Jim Kerrigan loves his um, 149. 149 is a great pen. It's definitely for people, I think, with larger hands. But I won't say that exclusively because I know plenty of people with smaller hands that love it. Any kind of rule that you make or you think someone would prefer, there's going to be 10 people who contradict it. And um, I think I've said this before, but I celebrate that. I love the rule of breakers. I love the mad ones. I love people who, who burn passionately over small things like fountain pens and paper and ink and uh, moments where they're writing by candlelight. People who take joy in this and what we're doing. It's so special, guys. You know, each of you. It's, it's a special thing to really take joy in a niche hobby and to express it with other people and to be honest and supportive. And I, I, I want to thank each and every one of you. I, I love how positive you guys are in the comments. And it means a lot. I think this is a very gentle corner of the Internet. And I feel like we've already accomplished something. And I'll also say that I took my eye off of trying to get as many views on my videos as I can. Now, I still am on YouTube to promote what I put out. I don't want it to be forgotten. And the more people that see it each Friday as it comes out, the better. And it also brings more people to the table and makes things more interesting. But... At the same time, my focus is making this a community that's healthy, that you guys feel inspired, that when you see a new Hemingway Jones video pop up in your homepage on YouTube, you're like, I can't wait to watch that. I can't wait to comment on there. I know Wolverine 3660 is going to be in the comments. I know Judy's going to be there, Simon, you know, all, all the usual suspects. And that they're friends and, and that it's supportive and it's just a nice place. And you know you're going to learn something. You're going to get entertained a little. And we're all going to talk and laugh about it each Tuesday night on the live show. So that's my goal for the channel. And that's what I appreciate from you. And Wolf brings up an awesome point. Don't forget to like the video. That's right. Like and subscribe, guys. If you're watching this channel and you haven't subscribed... Just let me take up a little corner of your uh, homepage, if you would. It really helps a small channel like mine. And um, YouTube doesn't do us any favors. We fight for every little bit of attention that we can. So, very cool. Um, Gerard, Gerald Hauswald. I do calligraphy in the copper plate style. What is the best pen for line variation? Thought it might be the Pilot Falcon, is it? I have not had good luck with the Pilot Falcon, but I have the first version that came out, and people tell me it's a lot better now. So I need to try it. I haven't tried it myself in a while. If I were recommending one for copper plate, though, I would say the Montblanc 146 calligraphy nib. It's brilliant. The line variation is fantastic, and it... It performs, it snaps back. It's perfect for that. I've taken a copper plate um, class with Montblanc, and I used that pen, and it was brilliant, just brilliant. Beside that, maybe pick up something like a Waterman 52 and a half, a vintage pen. That's, that's a joy to use. It's like writing with a quill. So... Oh, Gerald Hauswald says, I like that you answer my comments. You've been the only YouTuber so far that does that, and I'm forever grateful. Thanks, my friend. I really appreciate that. And thanks for being so active tonight. You're all over the comments, so I appreciate it. Um, yes, I think it's important for me to answer as many comments as I can. And I do try. It, it is kind of hard sometimes because I obviously have a day job. <laughs> And that comes first, but I usually answer them first thing in the morning and then when I come home at night. 
And I, I just feel like to make it healthy and to keep the exchange. Because for me, the joy of this channel is the exchange. It's almost an academic um, forum for us, for me to give you guys information, for you to give me information, and for us to sort of analyze it and um, and see where we are. And I think we all do better that way. So I really appreciate it. Oh, Mummy Brown brings up a good point with copper plate. The blue do is great. The pen body isn't so great, but the nib is great. That's a good point. Um, pen body's okay. It's um, it's not great, but the but it's pretty. But that nib is stupendous. So Sexus Pompeius says an old Waterman fifty two would be great. Absolutely. I have a Waterman five I'm using right now with a flex nib. It's like painting with a brush. It's brilliant. Matter of fact, I am probably going to do a video on that. I've written a couple of interesting scripts, guys. So you're going to see some really neat videos coming up this year. I'll give you a little preview. So Friday at noon, my next video comes out. And I need all of your help with this one. I really want this one to do good because it's very, very personal. And if it does bad, it's going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> um, I say that jokingly, but I'm, I'm partially serious. So Friday at noon is how to write the perfect love letter. And the point of this video is to pull in all the skills we've been talking about since the channel started. What is the perfect pen for a situation? What is the perfect ink? Where, how do you prepare the, the space to get you in the mindset? And then I literally write a love letter to my wife. You guys get to hear it. You don't get to see me give it to her. I, mean, I should have filmed that maybe, but I don't know. You know, I mean, I filmed writing it. Maybe I should have. That would have been a nice emotional ending for that. I don't know. But anyway, I do write it and you get to see it and we talk about it and it has some incredible music and it's really a synthesis of everything from like how to approach writing to how to finish writing. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. One of the other things that's really cool about it is that I show off all my stationery, which is extra important since I've used up almost all my stationery since. So this is going to sort of stand as a testament to my stationery <laughs> now that it's gone now that it's dispersed amongst the members of this channel so i hope you guys will watch it and refer it maybe share it with someone who you think who you think might enjoy that kind of content and jim kerrigan saying confirm bachelor for love letters i'll tell you what though you can write something to your mom to your friend to whomever so it doesn't have to be to the person that you love techno raptors here hello my friend always a pleasure so please check that video out and then the following week is a very straightforward review of the conway stewart honey noir lever fill churchill fountain pen so you saw the one with the Churchill plot and what it means to be a hero. It's a very beautiful, if I say so myself, and slick video. I'm very proud of it. I did a lot of work. If you haven't seen the Churchill video, please seek it out. It's, um, it's probably my best editing I've ever done. So even if you watch it for that, I'd appreciate it. But I did want to do something more straightforward, too, to get... A review out there and that airs next week and then the week after that is how to begin journaling and that was filmed at Walden Pond there are moments in this you guys you're not going to believe there are moments that you'll laugh there's moments that you might tear up a little it's it's pretty good or at least I did but I have my own things going on so 
So good stuff. I see Gerald's have been with his wife for 42 years. Good job. Simon Krupa, Krupa asks, any upcoming guests for the new year? You know, I'm working on that, Simon. I have one person who is like this close to being confirmed. It's a person with another YouTube channel. It's sort of um, travelogue storytelling. She's very charming. She's fantastic in her editing. And she's a stupendous storyteller. So I thought it would be great to get her on and we can talk about how she approaches storytelling. Um, so she's this close. So I'm hoping to bring her on. But short of that, I've been asking a lot of people and some people have said that they're too shy, which I'm surprised. I even asked a couple. Well, not a couple. I asked a couple. Yeah, <laughs> I asked someone who has a YouTube channel. And they were a little shy. So I would love to get some some good guests. I'm sure we'll bring Brendan back. So you can count on that. But if you guys have any suggestions for guests, please leave it in the comment section. And if you guys know anyone, then introduce them to me. I'd love to get more storytellers. Um, people who have a different perspective than what we're used to. I think that's um, really a good use of our time. Techno Raptor, writing a love letter to your loved one right as they are sitting next to you. But it's like, oh, here you go. I've done that. I've done that. There's a couple of surprises, too, in that writing a love letter video that I think you guys will enjoy. I don't want to give them all away, but one might involve fire. So... So I think you're going to like it. We got exciting things going on, guys. We're going to do the live show each Tuesday. The new videos are going to come out on Fridays. And then occasionally I'm going to put an additional one up on the weekends. I'm going to do some other content beside what we normally do here and there. I want to do some stuff on clothes. I want to do a couple of things on pocket knives and wine openers and on um, some Indiana Jones stuff, which is one of my nerdy hobbies, which you'll learn all about. So it'll be some interesting stuff. Uh, Wendell says it would be, it would be Love to have my wife on and talk about her job in art. That's um that would be interesting. My wife is really interesting and has a fantastic voice. If you've heard her speak, you probably wouldn't want me on here anymore. The only conflict with having her on is that she's up putting my daughter to bed right now while I'm doing this. So the logistics might have to be a little a little different. We might have to do it a different time or something. But that would be fun. I would certainly love to have her on here. Okay. I, Wolf says doodle bug, who I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, all these fig boot too, David Parker. I have heard of him because I think of Bigfoot every time I see it, which I'm assuming is what he's doing um i just don't know these guys so if you guys know these guys and you think they'd be interested but like i'm pretty sure this fig boot fellow has a giant channel he probably has no idea who i am and wouldn't um be interested but if any of you guys can make a an introduction i'd love to have them on so it would be Super fun. I, I wish I had more friends on YouTube, to be honest. I was so excited and inspired by having Adventure Denali on here. I just, it was just kind of interesting that she even knew about this channel. And she was fantastic in the comment section. She would be great, um, you know, if she ever wanted to come on. I would certainly have her. She's a fantastic storyteller, too. So all of that would be fantastic. So if any of you guys know any um, 
anyone you could introduce. Technoraptor, invite your wife to talk about what she likes about fountain pens. My wife has her own collection, and it's brilliant. It's, it's very small, but it's great. She has um, a Lamy Safari. She has a Twisby Vac 700 Iris with a cursive italic nib. She has a Hero, vintage Hero that looks like Chinese porcelain. And she has a Pilot Vanishing Point in blue carbon. I mean, that's brilliant. She might have more, but I know she at least has those. What a brilliant collection. So that, um, that would be great. Manny Lamont says, I know um, Waski Squirrel has mentioned you. Oh, I didn't know that. If anybody mentions me, let me know. It's good for my ego. Um, he's a really nice fellow. We talk a little bit. I'd like to get him on camera. Um, I think I threw it out there with him. So he might be someone you see at some point in the future. He's a very, very nice guy. Um, we also follow each other over on Instagram. So I would, I'd enjoy having him on. He's, he's lovely. So, but um, I, I, one of my resolutions, my absolutions for the year is I'm going to start watching some other channels. In the past, I felt like it was too much influence I didn't want to imitate anyone, but I feel like now I have my way. I, my editing style, my presentation style is mine. I, no one's going to affect it now. So I feel like I'm in a nice, strong, secure spot where I can look at what else is going on. And I think I miss a lot of trends. Like some of these folks that you mentioned, I don't. I don't know. And I probably should know who they are. Like the um, big fig, fig boot fellow. I've seen his channel, but I haven't watched it. But he's like one of the biggest channels. So I should probably watch what's going on. So I know what's going on. I do watch um, Adventure Denali because I've always liked her style. It's not so much about pens. It's certainly not about materialism, which I love. It's about her experiences and how she feels about things. And I like that approach. I also watch Goulet because I, I enjoy some of the banter. I skip over a lot of the personal stuff because like he's cleaning up his yard. I don't, I don't, I'm not all that interested in that. I love when they talk about pens, but I do feel like they're very restricted because they're a company and they only talk about the stuff that they have in their shop. So it's a little limiting. It, it limits my imagination a bit, but they're brilliant presenters. Brian's got a fantastic way about him. He's got a great voice. Um, the other fella whose name escapes me seems really nice, kind of like passionate, a little, a little more animated than Brian. I think they play off each other very well. So I enjoy that channel too. So Photog Man says, how about movie scenes that feature a fountain pen? That's not a bad idea. Um, the only problem that you can run into is that if you lift scenes from films, you can get a copyright strike here on YouTube. So you just need to be careful about that. So... I'm reading your comments, guys. So I, I love that you guys watch other channels. Let me know in the comments, if you would, um, the other other people. And if you know any of these folks and care to make an introduction, please do. I'm trying to expand my horizons, guys. It's time to open up. We've been isolated too long. So no man is an island. All right. We've gone. We've said it all. An hour and 20 minutes. I had hoped for an hour i covered everything i wanted to cover i could sit here all night reading your comments and ask and answering them but we will be together soon so thanks guys thank you to the members specifically but thanks to each and every one of you for just being yourselves and being supportive and just the lovely people you are um, thanks to all the members for the Letter exchange, super fun. I have two letters here right now that I'm going to read. 
and I'm really excited about that. So if you'd like to join, become a member, Cognoscenti or Illuminati, and let's let's exchange some letters. Super fun. We're going to do it with each other now. That's the next step. So I'm going to ask for some help. Um, oh, Gourmet Pens was at the Commonwealth Pen Show. Uh, oh, wow. See, I didn't see her. Um, that would be fun. I've watched her channel a couple times. When I, I think it was the, um, the 146 calligraphy nib. When I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted that, I watched one of her videos on that. So anyway, you're going to get me talking again. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Love you all. We'll see each other soon. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.